Innovator's back, and it's greener than ever. Ginger Runner. What is up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another Ginger Runner review. You can also just call me Dennis Nedry. That's a Jurassic Park reference, because I'm wearing a shirt. It also looks like the same shirt the Chunk wears in the Goonies. Nailing it. Today, we're going to talk about a pretty dang fun shoe from Innovate. It's the Innovate Terra Ultra G270. Before we get into the review, of course, I have to point out that the shoes were provided by Innovate for review. I can say whatever the hell I want about it. That is what I'm going to do today. Let's dive in. So Innovate is back with this new update to the G260, which I reviewed last year and reviewed fairly favorably. It was actually a pretty dang good trail runner. It was a no-nonsense trail beast that brought you lower to the ground, gave you plenty of flexibility, lots of ground feel, and was as durable as I'll get up. So here comes the G270, and I just want to point out that the 270 actually refers to the average weight in grams of the G270 across the size line. Mine weighs in at 309 grams in size 11. So... G309. The Terra Ultra G270 supposedly improves upon a lot of the qualities that made the G260 a standout shoe for Innovate. The shoe was just recently used by badass ultra runner Damian Hall uh, in setting the new Pennine Way FKT. So will wearing this shoe make us as amazing as Damian Hall? Not even close. That dude could wear Ziploc bags tied together with dental floss on his feet and he would still kick all of our asses. But I digress. The Innovate Terra Ultra G270 is a low stack, super flexible shoe that many who desire a simple, durable trail option will love. Gone are the sausage laces, or bangers laces for my UK viewers, and in are some new and improved materials. The G270 sports a new outsole recipe with graphene grip rubber, a Power Flow Max midsole with higher energy return that is supposed to enhance underfoot comfort, a new boomerang insole that also increases energy return for greater cushioning, a new adapter fit tech in the upper that adjusts to the natural movements and swelling of the foot during longer efforts. By the way, I'm adding emphasis to highlight all the marketing buzzwords that Innovate is trademarking with this shoe. My guess is that some of these terms will be as sticky as the graphene, but does all of this innovation, do all of these marketing buzzwords actually contribute to a better shoe than the G260? As always, we're gonna find out in today's review. I like to talk about all the things that I like about a product, that I dislike about a product, the Terra Ultra G270, is no exception. Let's get into it, starting as always with the things that I like. Ground feel. So one thing that made the G260 such a standout shoe for me was just the amount of ground feel that you got. There's not a lot of protection underfoot, but what you get in its place is just that real tactile feel where your foot feels instantly connected to the ground. All of the surfaces that you're running across, you'll, you'll feel all the nooks and crannies. A lot of people like that. Uh, I am always in the mixed realm as far as ground feel is concerned, but in this case, I do really like it. For me, the shoe certainly excels when the ground underfoot is a bit softer. So either after a rain or if you're running in mud or softer grass, that sort of thing. When the ground underfoot isn't super aggressive, uh, sharp rocks, really technical terrain, you're not getting a lot of those sharp edges that just dig into the foot. That's when I really begin to love that ground feel without it being a minimal shoe where your foot really begins to fatigue prematurely. You can still get some pretty good miles in this shoe. Uh, and your foot won't feel the pain and discomfort associated with more minimal footwear. Durability, again, uh, Innovate just seems to knock this out of the park with every shoe that I've reviewed from them. Uh, durability is not gonna be an issue in this shoe. We have their welded overlays, the mesh upper, the graphene outsole, everything is holding up really, really well. There is no seam issues whatsoever. The shoe will just continue to hold up with everything that you throw at it. Uh, and that's always been the case with Innovate here with the uh, Terra Ultra G270. It's the same thing. Flexibility. I don't know if I really mentioned this with the G260, but uh, this one thing that definitely carries over as well is just the amount of flexibility that this shoe has. So in correlation with the overall ground feel, there isn't a lot of midsole pack here and there isn't a lot of outsole. So what you do get in exchange is this wonderful flexibility. No matter which way your foot lands or any of the surfaces that you're running on, the shoe will just naturally adapt with your foot along the ground and it's a it's a really cool sensation it's nice to have a shoe like that back into my rotation again uh, i do enjoy it good flexibility and finally samesies uh, and i've mentioned this in recent reviews as well with other shoes that have gone into newer versions but this shoe carries a lot of what was great about the g260 right into the new version it does change some of the smaller things uh, some new materials in the upper a little bit additional midsole change uh the graphene recipe and the outsole these changes are so minor you're not going to feel that much difference at all so what was good about the g260 does carry over into the 270 and really again just 
Innovate has delivered on another really good trail running shoe that will be good for shorter distances, at least in my case, where you're going for that ground feel. This is the type of shoe that will get you there. But it is not all chips and kebabs. There are a couple of things I dislike. Let's get to those now. Grip. So the graphene grip that they've touted in this shoe for the last couple of generations and in various versions from Innovate, uh, it still does not deliver the amount of grip that I have come to anticipate based off all the marketing and everything like that. Specifically in wet environments like wet wood or wet rocks, uh, that is where I would hope that the shoe would really excel, especially because they tout this material as being the toughest material. And I questioned that in the G260 review of just what does that mean, toughest? Does that mean grippiest? Does that mean most durable? And they've sort of come back and doubled up on it and said, yeah, it's grippier, it's tough, it, you know, all of those things. But what I have found is that it's still the same as the G260 in the sense that it doesn't give me as much grip as I'd hoped. The lugs work as lugs would work. The new drainage grooves, the little additional texture to the lugs themselves, that's all well and good, but I, I still found myself slipping on wet roots and wet rocks here in the Pacific Northwest more than I'm experiencing in other trail shoes. And that was a, a big surprise and essentially a big bummer because they definitely market the graphene as being this incredible new material. I have found it to be very durable but I have found it to also not provide as much grip as I would hope. Not enough stick. Tack, tack, it's not tacky enough. And finally, price. So it's a $160 shoe. This is something I just talked about in another review recently. Um, $160 is a lot to pay for a shoe that does actually bring you closer to the ground, uh, gives you lots of ground feel. And for me and my feet and my running style and my body size, it may not be the shoe that I'm gonna be using in long, long, distance events like 20 to 30 miles plus despite the fact i know that there are incredible athletes out there that are running 268 mile trails in this shoe i get it it's not necessarily going to be the case for me this is a, a shorter distance shoe so for 160 dollars price point that's a lot to pay and i do feel like you're paying for the materials and the durability but at a higher price point so it really depends on what you want out of a shoe do you like ground feel do you like zero drop do you like some volume accommodation in the upper uh, this shoe has all of that but at a pretty high price point. That being said, that's actually it for dislikes. I wasn't sure what to expect from the new version. There's a lot of marketing behind this. So in conclusion, what do I think of the Innovate G270? I think it's a lot like the G260. I think there are some tiny little improvements, but there's still some shortcomings that I clearly pointed out in this review. If you are looking for a shoe that is low to the ground, provides you with plenty of flexibility and ground feel and lots of durability for an extra long lifespan in a shoe, if you're looking for a shoe that might compete with something like the Lone Peak or the Sense Pro 4, the Terra Ultra G270 might just be the ticket. Uh, just expect to pay a little bit extra for it. Let's get a little bit more specific. Talking about build quality, as I've already mentioned, Innovate really just hits this one out of the park. I think their shoes are always very durable. They're always designed with the materials in mind that will last you for a long time. Comfort, while this new midsole material it talks about being more cushioned and more resilient, more energy return, it just didn't feel that different to me. You're not dealing with a lot underfoot as it is, uh, maybe nine to 10 millimeters of stack height. Now that the shoe is definitely worn in, it's a little bit better than the G260, but it wasn't anything that I was sitting there going, oh wow, this is a really improved comfort here. That is exactly how I talk to myself. So comfort to me was, uh, was right on par with the G260. If you like the previous version, you'll fit right in with the new one. Fit, it is better in part to these new laces. Uh, they did get rid of those sausage laces. They are using some flatter laces here and I was able to get a better tie down across the midfoot uh, and some of this new upper materials and the design of it definitely caters to a better midfoot fit. Uh, you still have a nice roomy toe box there as well. So overall, I think the fit is slightly improved, which is, is nice. Price, so this is, you know, one of the major shortcomings of the shoe. It's expensive, I already talked a lot about it. Um, you might be able to find the previous version on sale. If so, grab it, uh, but at 160 bucks, it's a lot of money. And finally, looks. This is gonna be polarizing, because uh, to me, it just looks like a Ninja Turtle costume for your foot. That's what I mentioned in the previous review as well. Um, it's bright green, that hasn't changed, green and black. You certainly are gonna be recognized with the shoe on your foot. Wearing this shoe on your foot is equivalent to me wearing this shirt, it's uh, it's loud. <laughs> so to me, uh, I'm not really keen on the looks, but you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Bringing us to our final criteria is the Terra Ultra G270 from Innovate, a buy, try, or a why, solid try. If you've had a chance to try any Innovates, these 
series, the Terra Ultra G260 and 270 are probably some of the best innovates that I have reviewed. Uh, the G260 was a really solid performer. The G270 just takes that same platform, tweaks a little bit better. Uh, it is going to be low to the ground, lots of flexibility. You're going to feel every nook and cranny of the ground. There's no rock protection or anything underfoot. It's going to be a shoe for those of you who enjoy that sort of thing. It's certainly going to be a solid try from me. So that is it for the review. Have you had a chance to try the Terra Ultra G270 on your feet or even the previous version? I am actually very curious about that and what you thought of that Innovate shoe. In the comments of this video, let me know. And of course, if you want to find out more information about the shoe or get a pair for yourself, I do have links in the description of this video that will uh, take you over to where you can get the shoes for yourself. I encourage you to use them. It helps the channel out, cost you nothing. That's it. If you like this review, make sure you like, favorite, and subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash the ginger runner. Right over here are the social media links, and at the bottom there is patreon.com slash the ginger runner. That is how we actually support this channel. Uh, keep the lights on, keep the mics hot, all that stuff. It is right over there. And for the $3 level and above, you get to join our daily live stream. We call it the Daily Brew. We talk about all things running, sport, athletics, life, uh, everything, right there at patreon.com. We have over 110 episodes at this point. And that's 110 hours of content you can just go get for three bucks a month. Uh, check it out. It supports us and everything that we do here. Yeah. That's it. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to today's review. If you liked it, great. We'll see you guys next week for more. Get out there, train as hard as you can, virtually race harder, and party the hardest. I know I am. We'll see you guys next week. Okay, bye-bye.